Good morning, guys. So today, after fixing my microphone and everything, I woke up to a new patch of Elden Ring, which was fun to download, by the way. So patch one point, let me make sure I get this right, 1.04. Let's read over those. So, starting off, it says, we are distributing an update to improve the stability of gameplay and to adjust balance. Oh, thank God. We apologize for the inconvenience, but please apply the latest update before you enjoy the game. Alright, I have my morning milk ready, uh, my neighbors are coming home, and my fridge is angry. So, a normal morning. Major changes included in the latest update. Additional elements added. Added an option to turn camera auto-rotate function on and off. I didn't actually know that this wasn't an option. Added some event phases for the NPC patches. Does his quest actually finish now? Mm -mm. Balance adjustments. Increase Colossal Swords, Colossal Weapon, Attack Speed, and lowered their recovery time. That is a godsend. Jump attack not included. I mean, that's fine. Jump attack's pretty fast. Increase the two-handed attack damage of colossal swords, colossal weapons, jump attack not included. That's actually great, because up until, hopefully up until now, um, two-handing colossal weapons was really the only good way to use them. Because one-handing, or sorry, not two-handing, sorry. Stancing them. Dual stance was like the best way to use pretty much every weapon. It was faster in every way, and it did more damage in like every way, and had better recovery. Which is kind of wonk if you think about it. Um, increased physical block rate, and guard boost of colossal sword, colossal weapons, great sword, great hammer, great axe, great spear, and halberd. So you can actually block without a shield. That sounds good. I'm going to test that out. Increase the damage of Grafted Blade Greatsword, that's good. It's one of the legendary armaments, so it should have good damage. <clears throat> Increase the damage of Devourer's Scepter. I have no idea what that is. So, I'm gonna have to look into that. Decrease the scaling of status effect buildup from spells and incantations of all the Noric Staff and Dragon Communion Seal. I'm assuming this means some of the spells they have will be will do less build up because I'm assuming it's it's similar to how <clears throat> like status effect on bleed weapon scales um so hopefully less of the rot dragon spam decrease the effect of great shield talisman for weapons with high block rate I don't know how I feel about that. I didn't really think about the fact that it affected weapons with high block rate, but I think that's just to level it out a little bit. Um, shorten the length of the Madness Afflicted animation. That's good. Hopefully we can't just be stun locked anymore. Lowered the speed of Madness build up recovery. Hopefully that just makes it so you can't spam them as much. <clears throat> Ignore my phone. A slightly increased FP and stamina growth rate at lower levels. Players will need to perform any of the following actions for the changes to be reflected. This is required only once. New characters created after this update will not require this action. Level up, activate Godric's Great Rune, re-equipping any equipment, armor, or talisman which grants bonus stat to either strength, dexterity, vigor, endurance, intelligence, faith, or arcane. So just re-equip your source seal. <clears throat> Other enemy and weapon balance changes that are not tossed in. Okay. So that's good, meaning you don't have to put as much into focus, I'm hoping, to be able to summon better spirits for those, those of you who uh, solo. Sorcery and incantation, and wowzers, is this a long bit? Um, <clears throat> here we go. A 
upward adjustments. Crystal Barrage, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Gavel of Hyma, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Allows caster to more easily withstand enemies while casting, so hyper armor, think gone. Shatter Earth, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Allows caster to move to more easily withstand enemies while casting, more of that. Rock Blaster, decrease recovery time. Allows caster to more easily withstand enemy attack while casting. Thops Barrier, increase area of effect and slightly increase effect duration. I mean, that's good on its own, because it's not being used at all. Um, hmm. I doubt this will really increase it being used, but maybe people will test it out for a little while. Renala's Full Moon, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. <clears throat> I need more of my milk. Granny's Dark Moon, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. I hear this also may need a buff in damage compared to the Full Moon, since it's uh, it takes more FP, like a lot more FP. <clears throat> Carrying Greatsword, increase cast speed at lower dexterity. That's good. Cause I mean, if you're in it, if you're in intelligence build, you shouldn't have to be like super specking in the decks just to get your cast speed. Magma shot, decrease FP cost and increase cast speed. Roiling magma, increase cast speed and decrease time until magma explodes. Yomir's fury, slightly decrease the random nature of projectiles range and increase the damage of lava pool. Increase the hitbox. Rikard's Rain Card, decrease FP cost. I think that's a spammable, so that makes sense. Oracle Bubbles, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Great Oracular Bubble, increase cast speed, decrease recovery time. A lot of this is decrease recovery time for spells and increase cast speed, from what I'm seeing. Rise of Sin, decrease recovery time, increase blood loss, build up on enemy. I don't really know if we need that. Briars of Punishment, Oh wait, no, these are the blood spells, right? So maybe we'll actually be seeing some more blood spells being used because there's only like, what, three of them? Four of them? Uh, Briar's Punishment, decreased recovery time, increases blood loss buildup on enemies. Explosive Ghost Flame, decrease FP cost and recovery time. Tibia Summon, increased damage and cast speed. Aspects of the Crucible Tail, Decrease FP and stamina cost. Aspects of the Crucible Horns. Decrease FP and stamina cost. Increase cast speed. Increases the distance traveled when not charged and made it easier to cause enemies to flinch when charged. I think... So, the Crucible stuff is something that I wanted to spec into on my faith build that's level 90. Horns was one of my favorite ones, but the only thing was it costs a lot of FP and a lot of stamina. I want to test this out and see if it's actually fun to use now. I might try out the tail as well because of this. Um, Elden Stars, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Black Blade, decrease stamina consumption and decrease recovery time. Discus of Light. Decrease FP cost, increase damage and cast speed. Triple rings of light, increase damage. Those discuses have kind of needed increase of damage since Dark Souls 3, to be honest. Radagon's rings of light. Decrease FP cost, increase damage and cast speed, decrease recovery time. Lightning strike. Increase stamina cost, increase cast speed, and decrease recovery time. Hone bolt, increase cast speed, and decrease recovery time. Ancient Dragon's Lightning Spear, decreased FP and stamina cost, increase cast speed, and decrease recovery time. Allows caster to more easily withstand enemy attacks while casting. I feel like a lot of the, um, Ooh. A lot of the incantations could really get buffed with that whole 
uh, withstand enemy attacks. It sucks when you're pulling out this giant, beautiful, awesome, like, world-ending lightning javelin or whatever, and suddenly you get stopped by uh, somebody who poked you with an s <laughs> It's a little, that sucks. Um, Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. Decreased recovery time. Lancey Excalade, here we go. Decrease FP and stamina cost. Thank god. Increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Allows caster to more easily- Okay, so I'm actually probably going to be using Lanciax Glaive. Cool. And her brother, Fortisag's Lightning Spear. Same thing. Awesome. Decrease FP and stamina and hyper armor. Frozen Lightning Spear. Decrease stamina cost, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time, allows caster to more easily withstand enemy attack while casting. Frozen Lightning Spear is the blue one. I'm assuming that in that requires intelligence, but I don't remember. I'm not much of a caster, unfortunately. Death Lightning. Decrease FP costs, increase the duration of death accumulating smoke. Oh, Flame. Increase damage. Giant's Flame take the decreased stamina cost. Flame of the Fell God, decrease FP cost and increase damage. That's good because if you get hit by that, I mean, really, what are you doing? Whirl of Flame, increase damage, decrease recovery time. Burn of Flame, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Black Flame, increase damage and the spell can break enemy guard more easily. Ooh, that's cool. Scouring Black Flame, decrease FP cost and recovery time, increase attack range and area of effect. Black Flame Ritual, reduce to FP cost and increase damage. Phyrinx Beast Claw, increase damage and decrease recovery time. Blood Flame Talons, decrease FP cost and increase cast speed, decrease recovery time. Blood Boon, increase damage, increase cast speed and decrease effect startup time. Decrease recovery time. Pest threads. Decrease stamina cost. People spam it. That's just how it is. Scarlet Aeonia. Increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Allows caster to more easily withstand enemy attacks while casting. Good, because the boss doesn't have any issue with just sitting there in it. Unendurable Frenzy. Increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Decrease the random nature of projectiles range an increased madness buildup on enemies. Inescapable Frenzy, increased cast speed, good because nobody could grab anybody with that. Placidistics Rain, or sorry, Ruin. Decrease FP, stamina cost, and recovery time. Dragon Claw. Decreased FP, stamina cost, and recovery time, and made it easier to cause enemies to flinch when charged. Dragon Maw. Decreased FP, stamina cost, recovery time, and increased cast speed, and made it easier to cause enemies to flinch when charged. Gray Rolls Roar. Decreased FP, stamina cost, and recovery time. So, all around buff to most um, spells. I don't think there was anything that I remember reading just now that actually got a nerf, so spells are getting buffed. Or at least, a lot of them are incantations are getting buffed, let me be clear. Um, so that's good. Incantations were still somehow a little bit weak despite all of their stuff. Mm. Upward and downward adjustments. Ajula's Moonblade, here we go. Decrease the power of a single cast and improved performance so that the blades and frost hit more consistently and continuously. Increase cast speed at lower dexterity. Okay. So less damage, but it actually hits more. <laughs> okay, cool. Flame fall upon them. Decrease the damage of single cast and improve the performance so that it hits the enemy multiple times. Decreased FP cost. Cool, so it's made a little bit more spammy. Hall of Shabriri, decreased the madness buildup on the enemy, increased the cast speed, and decreased recovery time. From what I've seen of Hall of Shabriri, I don't know how I feel about that, but... Because I don't see it be used very often, because it's not good. 
so I feel like that's even more of a nerf, despite the cast speed going up. But and the other nerf to madness builds <clears throat> in that the madness build up doesn't go away as fast. Downward adjustment swarm of flies decrease blood loss build up on enemy. Hmm. Okay. A little bit of a nerf to blood. Give me a moment. Try not to sneeze. Oh gosh. Woo. Flame of frenzy. Decrease madness build up on enemy. Frenzy burst. Decrease madna bu madness build up on enemy. They're trying to walk back madness a lot right now. Okay. Weapon skills. Alrighty, here we go. <clears throat> For all of those ashes of war, here we go. <clears throat> Upward adjustments. Lion's Claw. Increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. More flippies. Kick. Increase cast speed. I don't know if anybody uses it, but that's always a good idea. Hora lose Earthshaker. Increase cast speed. Increase cast speed on follow-up input. Decrease recovery time. That's a really good buff to that. Maybe we'll actually see it. Trolls Roar. Decrease stamina cost. Thank god. Increase cast speed on follow-up input. Increase distance traveled. Oh, hang on. Trolls Roar. I'm assuming... Is this... I don't remember if Trolls Roar is the big uh, omnidirectional, or if that's the one where people are yelling at you and killing you. I don't know. I'll find out at some point. Because um, it says increase cast speed on follow-up input. I don't know how I feel about that. Giant hunt, decrease recovery time. Nice. For strength builds, mostly. Storm assault, decrease recovery time. I still haven't even used this. I hope it's good. I hope it's better. Carrion Greatsword and Carrion Grandeur are getting increased cast speed and decreased recovery time. Increase the damage when charged and made it easier to cause enemies to flinch. Alright, so big fuck off magic sword hopefully is going to be seen more. Gravitas, increase cast speed. Flaming Strike, increase the travel distance of a stepping cleave in a strong attack. Okay. So you'll actually move forward a bit more. Cool. Black Flame Tornado. So this is part of the thing that I read a bit earlier that is strange to me. Added hitbox to weapon when spinning. You're going to hear a lot of that added hitbox part. Apparently, a lot of Ashes of War didn't have a hitbox during certain parts of their spin-up. Which is really odd. And added a window to roll during the attack to cancel the animation. That too. A lot of these got cancels. <clears throat> Lightning slash. Increased cast speed. Added a hitbox to the stomp animation. So that first stomp, where a little lightning comes down and hits your weapon, that now has a hitbox. Cool. It also has a better cast speed. Thank God. Sacred Blade. Increased cast speed. Sacred Ring of Light. Increased cast speed. Poisonous Miss. Increased cast speed. Poison Moth Flight. Increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Ice Spear. Added a hitbox to the weapon's spinning animation. So, another added hitbox. Chilling Mist. Increase cast speed. Assassin's Gambit. Increase cast speed. Shield Bash. Increase cast speed. Shield Crash. Decrease stamina cost and increase cast speed. Blade of Gold, decrease stamina cost, increase cast speed, and decrease recovery time. Blade of Death, increase cast speed, and decrease recovery time. Hopefully we'll be seeing a little bit more of Blade of Gold, simply because nobody uses that weapon. Um, Golden Tempering, decrease FP cost and increase cast speed, increased effect duration. So that's good, that's good, that's good. Uh, last Rites, increase cast speed. Mists of Slumber, increase cast speed. Eocade's Dancing Blade, and this is something I love, increased travel distance, and in added a window to roll during the attack to cancel the animation. Thank god, because that weapon art was kind of... It did a lot of damage, but if you missed it, you're kind of screwed. 
unblockable blade, increased cast speed, and the weapon with the weapon coated sword, to be clear. Boom, boom, upstairs. Alabaster Lord's Pull. Increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Added a window to roll during the attack to cancel the animation. Establish order. Decrease recovery time and increase cast speed on follow up input. Increase damage. Made it easier to cause enemies to flinch. Moonlight Greatsword. Decrease FP cost, increase cast speed, and decrease recovery time. Increase the frost buildup effect during the skill duration. That's cool. Uh, wave of gold, decrease FP costs, increase cast speed, and decrease recovery time. I don't know how I feel about that. It was already pretty strong, honestly. Wolf's assault, increase cast speed, and decrease recovery time. And the queen's black flame, increase cast speed, added a window to roll during the attack to cancel the animation. I think that whole cancelling animation is really good for a lot of these. Um, increased cast speed on Queen's Black Flame might be a little strong, but it's not exactly being used from what I've been seeing either, so. Dynast's Finesse, decrease stamina cost. I don't know what that is. Flying Form, decrease stamina cost. Death Flare, increase cast speed. Mmm. Cool. Onyx Lord's Repulsion, increased cast speed and decreased recovery time, added a window to roll during the attack to cancel the animation. Magma Guillotine, decreased stamina cost, increased cast speed, decreased recovery time on follow-up input. Cursed Blood Slice, increased cast speed and decreased recovery time. Ice Lightning Sword, increased cast speed, thank god, added a hitbox to the stomp animation. So hopefully we'll be seeing that beautiful katana a little bit more. Rosa summons, decrease recovery time. That's good because summons suck. Uh, I command the kneel, increase cast speed, including follow-up input. Added a window to roll during the attack to cancel the animation. I haven't seen this weapon once, so good to see. Gold breaker, decreased FP cost, increase cast speed, and decrease recovery time. Familiar, familial rancor, added a window to roll during the attack to cancel the animation. Nebula, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time with the weapon Bastard Stars. Regal Beast Claw, increase cast speed. That's good. That's pretty good. Increase cast speed on that would is greatly appreciated. That's a pretty slow, pretty slow weapon art. Devour of Worlds, increase cast speed. Regal Roar, decrease recovery time. Okay. Uh, Spear Call Ritual, decrease recovery time. Ancient Lightning Spear, decrease FP cost and increase cast speed. Allows players to more easily withstand enemy attacks while casting. Great Serpent Hunt, interesting. Decrease recovery time and increase damage. Allows player to more easily withstand attacks from enemies. Are they pushing for the Great Serpent Hunter to actually be like a weapon to really be used? Because that's good to hear, but... Wow, Rip Riker. <laughs> Frenzy Flame Thrust. Decrease FP cost. Decrease recovery time. Decrease madness buildup on self. So that's a buff to Vikes. That's interesting considering all the walkbacks they're doing for these spells with uh, with madness. Blood Boon Ritual, increase cast speed. Mikola's Ring of Light, increase cast speed. Sea of Magma, increase cast speed and decrease recovery time. Added a window to roll during the attack to cancel the animation. Flame Dance, decrease stamina cost, decrease recovery time. Added a window to roll during attack to cancel the animation for Flame Dance. Storm Kick, decrease stamina cost, and Bear Witness, increase cast speed. Good to see that uh, our little dragon boy is getting a buff. Upward and downward adjustments. Thundercloud form. Decreased damage when not charged. Decreased FP cost, thank god. Increased cast speed and decreased recovery time. So, 
hopefully we'll see more people running around with that giant toothpick. All right, bug fixes. Hopefully, some good bug fixes. Hopefully. Fixed a bug where the damage of inescapable frenzy was affected by right hand weapon. Didn't know that was a bug? Good to hear. So people aren't getting one shot by that spell. They'll still probably get one shot, but not as fast. Uh, fixed a bug where the damage of the weapon arts carrion retaliation was increased by weapon and status, and the effect was not displayed correctly during online multiplayer. So hopefully no more invisible swords from shields. Hopefully. Although, what is this? So, where the damage of weapon arts carrying retaliation was increased by weapon and status. So, the reason it's been doing so much damage is because it's being increased by your weapon? That's insane. But so hopefully it's fixed now, hopefully. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see if it's fixed. Um, fixed a bug where the animation when inflicted with a blood loss and frostbite was bigger than originally planned. So hopefully not being stunned too much into things. Fixed a bug during character appearance change menu in which some parameter changes were sometimes not reflected. Interesting. Fixed a bug that prevented a dialogue from appearing when executing leave on some items. Fixed a bug that allowed unauthorized items to be passed to other items, or sorry, other players. Players are not items. Treat them like people. Fixed a bug in multiplayer that prevented grace to be registered on the map if it was found just before the player is summoned. Fixed a, blu a, bu bleh 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 bleh. a bug that sometime, sometime, sometime prevented the mechanic of Renala, Queen of the Full Moon fight from working properly during cooperative multiplayer. So hopefully she'll always have her shield from now on. Fixed a bug that sometime prevented the player from entering the boss area after defeating Morgoth the Omen King. Isn't that a soft lock? Hmm. Fixed a bug that prevented Edgar the Revenger and Festering Fingerprint, Fingerprint Vike from invading after defeating the bosses in Lyernia of the Lake. Um, that's good. Considering that would mess up some things for a lot of people. The item Tonic of Forgetfulness can now be obtained at the Volcano Manor if the player wasn't able to obtain it due to quest progression. I don't know too much about this, because uh, I haven't done that quest yet, so my bad. Um, where was that? Added a protective barrier to Millicent after helping her at Michaela's Halic trees, so she cannot be unintentionally killed. Thank God. Uh, fixed a bug that sometime prevented the player from obtaining the reward after defeating the Dung Eater. That would suck. Fixed a bug that sometime prevented the player from progressing Dialysis quest line. Fixed a bug that sometime prevented player from duplicating Remembrance at the Walking Mausoleum. Fixed a bug that prevented player from inputting consecutive attacks when dual wielding thrusting swords. Fixed a bug that causes scythe to- I feel like I've dealt with that thrusting sword issue. Fixed a bug that causes scythe to lose blood loss effect if poison affinity is applied to the weapon. Fixed a bug where the damage of the iron greatsword was lower than expected when affinity is applied. Fixed a bug that caused FP consumption to increase when the player cast night comic with charge. <clears throat> fixed a bug that caused the default key setting on the keyboard for our weapon skill left control to not be set on PC, on PC only. Fixed a bug in the Steam version where the history of players who played multiplayer was not displayed correctly under certain circumstances. So hopefully I can actually see who I meet online now. Um, increase online multiplayer stability. Thank God. Hopefully it actually works this time. Fixed a bug that caused incorrect sounds to be played under certain circumstances. Fixed a bug that caused some places on the map to have incorrect a visual and hitbox. Weird. 
uh, fixed a bug that causes some enemies to have incorrect visual and behavior. Fixed a bug that causes some armor to have incorrect stats, weird, text fix, and other performance improvements and bug fixes. Alrighty. We will continue to provide improvement update in the future so you can enjoy Elden Ring more comfortably. Please stay tuned for more news. So this going to be it for the actual patch notes. Let's see what the comments are. So Colossal Weapons got a buff in Dark Moon, cost less FP and faster cast. Sick. That actually is pretty cool. Um, fixed a bug that prevented... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the invasion bug was a, a problem for a lot of people who needed those items, or wanted those items. Increase online multiplayer stability. Finally! In 2022, can we have ultra-wide support with black bars during gameplay and support for all aspect ratios? Even the Steam Deck would benefit from this. Thank you, S. Dreamer. Um, I don't know if that's gonna happen, to be honest. Unlock FPS for offline mode, please! Maybe someday. Nerf River of Weebs. <laughs> please, please nerf the River of Weebs. Finally, a colossal buff. Still FPS drop. Clown. Okay, so hopefully that gets fixed at some point. A patch for patches. Alright, so that's gonna be it for all of that. Um, interesting. I hope a lot of this helps with the madness running rampant right now. Um, I'm pretty happy about the colossal buffs and the, like, block buffs and all the incantation buffs, so hopefully we'll actually see less sorcerers and more faith wielders in this patch. But, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll try to put some tooltips in the bottom, um, after I go over go through the uh, footage um, and read through. I'll put tooltips for each big section so that if you're interested in weapon buffs um, and nerfs and stuff, uh, they'll be there. Hope you guys have a great morning, evening, afternoon. Also, quick announcement, I am streaming more on Twitch during the more chill streams due to the fact that um, I'll be using some music that I can't, uh, properly, uh, I can't properly credit on YouTube because it's a stream, not just a video at that point. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are doing well and I hope to see you over on Twitch whenever you guys come to chill out. Bye!